about overlapping segments. Okay, if you have two segments that overlap, okay, they're creating one segment, okay? But we're going to look at this as two segments separately. I'm just going to name these points here A, B. So the original segment A, B, and then I overlapped it with the second segment we'll call C, D. When you have overlapping segments, okay, you should notice I, when I started, A and B, C and D were separate. Okay, but now AB overlaps with CD. It creates three portions of the segment. Okay, so we're going to be talking about these three different portions, and we'll come back to this image here in just a minute. Okay, so in this sample, and this is from your textbook if you wanted to go back and look at it, it says that in each segment, AB is congruent to CD. So in this one, AB is congruent to CD. Both of them are 25 centimeters, and they've used the tick marks to show us that they're congruent. Also in this one, 36 and 36 tick marks showing they're congruent. Okay, they tell us from the markings on each diagram, determine the length of AC and BD. Okay, so for let's do the first figure. AC, okay, well that's 25 from A to B, and then 75 from B to C. So AB plus BC, 25 plus 75 is 100. So the length of AC is 100 centimeters. And then they also want the length of BD. Well, from B to C is 75, and from C to D is 25. So again, 75 plus 25 is 100. So BD is also 100 centimeters. Okay, so what do we discover? We discover that they're equal. Okay, let's double check also in this figure. AC is 36 and 80, which is... 116, okay, and BD from B to C is 80 plus 36, so BD is also 116 centimeters, okay, so in both of them we discovered that they are equal or congruent. And remember the symbol for congruent is that equal sign with the little squiggle. Okay, they're the same length. Step two asks us to draw a new line segment labeled AD, and then place points B and C somewhere on A and D so that AB is equal to CD. Okay, so they've drawn one for you, okay, here. So we have AD, and we want AB congruent to CD, and now they want us to measure AC and BD. Okay, so I'm going to measure. If you have a ruler, you can measure also. Um, here's my ruler. <coughs> so if I measure A to C, Okay, that's approximately 5 inches. Okay, or if you're in centimeters, it's 12.7 centimeters. Let's actually look at it in inches. I'm going to flip this over so we're looking at the inches side. Okay, so that was 5 inches. And now we also want to look at BD, so I'm going to line edge up with BD, and look, it's also 5 inches. They are the same, okay? So they're the same, or they're congruent. Okay, so using this information, we're going to complete this statement. If AD has points A, B, C, and D in that order, so A, B, C, D, and AB is congruent to CD, then what? What does that mean? Okay, so we've seen in both of these examples and the one that was drawn here that we measured, 
if AB is congruent to CD, then AC is congruent to BD as well. Okay, so that's what I was showing you on this original one here. Let me get rid of this ruler. I started out with these two separate segments. Okay, once I overlapped them, okay, since AC is congruent to BD, okay, and they overlap, they share this, so this piece is congruent to itself, whether you're talking about AB or CD, it's the same length, okay. So since they overlap and those two pieces are equal in this statement, I could say that AB is congruent to CD. So if we look here at an example asking us to fill some things out, they tell us that um, we're using this overlapping segment property to complete each statement. If AB is 3, then what is CD? Well, these both have two tick marks, that means they're congruent, so this would also be 3. If AC is 10, so from A to C is 10, what is B to D? Okay, well again, they have these two pieces that are congruent, and then they share this common piece here that's obviously the same as itself. So this would also be 10. And part C says that if BC is 4, so this center piece is 4, and AC, I'm sorry, CD is 3, what is the length of AC? So this is the piece we're looking for. So we're missing this. We have to find out what is this, and we can add these two pieces together. Well, again, we have two tick marks, so that means that this is also 3. So AC would be 3 plus 4, which is 7. Okay, you can also be given uh, line segments that rather than just numbers, they could give you an algebraic expression. For instance, that um, original picture we had here, if I tell you that this length, AC, is 2x plus 4, okay, so we're going to label this 2x plus 4, and I tell you that BD is x minus 8, so BD is x minus 8, Okay, and you're asked to find x, you can do that because we know that these two pieces are congruent. So if these two pieces are congruent, that means equal. So I would take 2x plus 4 and say it equals x minus 8. And I need to use algebra to solve this. I need to get all of my x's together. So I'm going to move this x over. It's a positive x, so I'm going to move it by subtracting cancels out, so that leaves me with 2x minus 1x is x. I still have plus 4, and the only thing left over here is that negative 8. Okay, don't forget the negative, that does make a difference. Then I'm going to move this constant, this plus 4 over, with the opposite operation, which is to subtract. So that means x is negative 12. So if you were given this, and you found that x was negative 12. If they had this middle piece also labeled, they could have said that this was 19x. And they asked what's the length of CB, or what's the length of anything. You would take whatever piece they're asking for and then plug in what you found x to be. Okay. So you can use this, you may be given algebraic expressions and have to solve also, but it's the same concept.
Okay, this is the r main rule down here that you're supposed to take away from this. If you have two overlapping line segments and the AB is congruent to CD, then the overlapping portions will be equal as well. Okay, that's it. Make sure you study for your quiz next class. Have a